So seasonal seasonal flu is is can often be very serious, and so we want to make sure that we remind people. Um, that the average annual flu that we get is something people should take precautions about. We estimate that about 36,000 people annually die from the seasonal flu. Now what happened last spring is that we saw a new novel virus of the flu developing. It was commonly called the swine flu, uh, that's how most people know it, but the formal term is H1N1 um, flu virus. That developed last spring. It's similar to the flu in its severity, but it seems to be affecting different groups of people. With the traditional flu, we worry about the elderly and young children. With the H1N1, we're seeing that it's affecting different groups of people. It seems to be affecting school-age children. It's affecting adults that have underlying illnesses like asthma and diabetes. It's affecting pregnant women. So it's one thing we've been doing at the state level is really monitoring how that's been developed. Since it's novel and it's a new strain, we've been monitoring it to make sure we're we're tracking how it's been developing, who's most at risk, and what we can do to prevent it. This summer, Governor Corzine directed me to engage with all of our local partners, and we held a series of summits to prepare for the fall return of H1N1. We've held four days thus far of our pandemic flu preparedness summit, and we have a, a fifth day coming up at the end of September. And we've been gathering hundreds of our local health and emergency preparedness partners to plan. We've been doing things like planning how we're going to vaccinate people, how we're going to make sure we get um, personal protective equipment out to those who need it, working with our local health partners and our hospitals to make sure they're prepared for a potential surge of new patients. We also have been working closely with the Department of Education and local education officials on how to get our schools ready. We know that what we learned in the spring was that since kids seem to be particularly susceptible and we know that kids are very effective at spreading the flu because they're, they're, they play so close together, um, is that we really need to focus on our schools. And we want to make sure that our schools are able to stay open so that kids can, can continue to learn. The symptoms are very similar to the traditional flu. It's a fever, cough, aches aches and pains. Um, it's very similar to the traditional flu and so you may not know which it is um, and the treatments are the same. So really what you need to do is look out for those symptoms. What there are very common sense precautions that people can take, that you, people and their families can take to protect themselves. Some of them are as basic as common sense hygiene. And people have heard it, but it bears, uh, heard before, but it bears repeating. Washing your hands thoroughly with soap and warm water, covering your coughs and sneezes, for example, with, with, a, um, with, with your elbow, um, and staying home if you're sick. And, and that can be hard, we know, but if you stay home when you're sick, then that means that um, hopefully we won't, we'll have less disruption in our schools and in our workplaces. So make sure to talk to your healthcare provider. And if your symptoms worsen and you feel you need to, you can always go to an emergency room, but make sure you talk to your doctor um, and, and make sure he or she knows um, how your symptoms are developing. And of course, most importantly, make sure you're staying home if you're sick. We know that the federal government has been working over the summer to develop a vaccine for the swine flu or H1N1. And if, if those tests prove that there is a safe and effective vaccine, it should be available in mid-October. So when, um, when that comes, we're going to encourage everyone to get, to get that vaccine. And, and when we know more, of course, we'll be um, doing a public awareness campaign and making sure people know that it's available. The good news is that on our website, nj.gov health, we have a find a flu shot button. So for anybody who doesn't have a regular doctor, doesn't know where to get, go to get a flu shot, click on that button, put in your zip code, and it'll tell you where, where to go get a flu shot. Governor Corzine um, was very pleased to announce that we're going to be able to offer that shot to anyone who needs it and wants, wants that shot. There will be clinics in every county across the state, and we've made sure to remove all financial barriers. So if you don't have health insurance, you can get access to a free shot through public health clinics or through your community health center. The developing outbreak of, of swine flu is cause for concern, but not cause for alarm. We've been using these months over the summer to prepare for the return. Um, people can take common sense pr um, protections um, to prevent the spread and to protect their families. And the vaccine will be available, we believe, in mid-October. And we hope everyone who wants to get a vaccine, it will be available to anyone who needs it, regardless of whether you have health insurance. And we've removed all financial barriers. And really, um, it's cause for concern, but not for alarm.